Hi, I'm Rebecca White. I'm President and CEO at the Houston Area Women's Center. For 35 years, the Women's Center has helped individuals affected by domestic and sexual violence in their efforts to move their lives forward. We provide a wide range of services, including emergency shelter, counseling, case management, transitional housing, a court services program that provides orientation and support for children who were victims or witnesses to violent crime, and of course community education and training. All of our services are provided free of charge. The gateway to these services is our hotline. Each year our trained staff and volunteers field more than 40,000 calls from individuals seeking safety, support, resources, and information. Celinda, so our manager of hotline services, will take you on a quick tour of what a typical day on the hotline is like for her and her team of advocates. Celinda? So the day in the hotline begins at 8.30 a.m. every morning. Shelters in the surrounding areas of Houston are called in efforts to identify beds for clients seeking shelter all throughout the day. Just seconds later, the first call begins. A woman slept in her car overnight after her abuser of 20 years kicked her out with her young children. A friend had only allowed her to park in her garage last night, which was infested with fleas, and the children had bites all over their bodies. The woman was desperate to get to her children to a safe place and begged for help. She had already called several shelters, but no one had enough space for her. Though the Women's Center was also filled to capacity, a Partner Safe Harbor Hotel kindly donated a room for 48 hours. In the meantime, staff worked tirelessly to find shelter. After getting some well-deserved rest and recuperating from the bites, the family was safely placed in our shelter after two days, and they are currently receiving services. It is no now 8.30 p.m., 85 <laughs> calls later. A woman calls the hotline and shares and she was sexually assaulted two days ago. She is crying and scared, not knowing what to do or who to tell. She shares it was a friend that assaulted her, a friend that she trusted and was part of her family. She was still in disbelief that the perpetrator attacked her during dinner at her house one night. He also gagged her and tried to choke her, all while raping her for hours. Then, still in crisis and in shock, the perpetrator demanded she get dressed and return to the dining table to finish dinner. The advocate provided emotional support and provided important medical attention information and reporting options to consider. They also determined a safety plan as the perpetrator had been calling her since the incident occurred. The advocate suggested a rape kit and offered a sexual assault accompaniment counselor to meet her at the hospital and provide support. Later that evening, the advocate visited the client and stayed with her during the rape kit for support. Mm -hmm. A few days later, after a follow-up phone call, the client scheduled an appointment and is currently attending counseling sessions. It is now 2.30 a.m., 95 calls later. A woman calls the hotline so upset it is difficult to understand what she is sharing. A store employee gave her the hotline number after finding her and her young child hiding in a restroom stall. The woman is at a local Walmart restroom after escaping from her abuser, who is waiting for her in the parking lot. Her young child is also crying in the background, and she is afraid to leave the restroom. The hotline advocate provides crisis intervention and discusses a safety plan to get her to a safe place. The advocate also works with staff from the store to get a security guard to the client, while police arrives at the scene. In the meantime, from another phone, staff then arranges shelter and transportation. Upon law enforcement's arrival, the client is placed in a cab and escorted by police to a shelter. The advocate stayed on the phone with the client the entire time. The woman is now calm and thanks the advocate by saying, I never knew that places like this existed. Thank you for saving our lives.